For over 300 years, the Port of Philadelphia has been one of the busiest ports in the nation. With more than 31 miles of usable waterfront along the Delaware River, it is one of the largest freshwater ports in the world. It is serviced by more than 100 piers and is capable of handling over 9,000 ocean-going vessels. Despite the fact that hundreds of valuable and flammable ship traffic travel through the port every day, it wasn't until the late 1800s that the city finally recognized a need for some kind of waterborne protection. Before that, only those structures and boats that lay closest to the shore within reach of the host streams of land companies were provided any safety. In 1890, the city began the charge of protecting its valuable waterfront by equipping a few of its existing police tugboats with fire pumps and hoses. The first boat was the William S. Stokely, assigned to the Delaware River. Shortly after, the Samuel G. King was assigned to the Schuylkill River. In 1892, a third police tugboat, the Visitor, was outfitted and assigned to the Delaware River along with the William S. Stokely. By 1892, the William S. Stokely, the Samuel G. King, and the Visitor were acting as Philadelphia's first line of defense against riverfront fires. Despite their efforts, these boats were being run by police crews who lacked any formal firefighting expertise, leaving the port in a vulnerable state. Luckily, the city understood the need for a boat specifically designed for the unique requirements of fighting ship and waterfront fires, and by 1891, the city was making appropriations for a fireboat to be constructed. Despite the setbacks, physical and political, the new fireboat was placed into service on September 1, 1893, and was named the Edwin S. Stewart after the current mayor of Philadelphia. The fireboat was launched with great fanfare and was described by Fire Chief James Baxter Jr. as a large and elegantly equipped iron and steel fireboat. But the satisfaction with the new waterfront firefighting capabilities was short-lived. Within just three years of launching the Edwin S. Stewart, the expanding demands of the port and improvements in the technology of fireboat construction rendered the apparatus inadequate. Chief Baxter and the fire department made an appeal to the city for a new boat. Unfortunately, the evolving hazards of high-rise buildings in Philadelphia demanded the full attention of the fire department and the appeal went largely unnoticed. The Edwin S. Stewart and the three police tugboats remained in service for decades, maintaining a barely adequate level of fire protection for the waterfront. In 1913, the plea for modern equipment was once again promoted, this time by Philadelphia Fire Department Chief Mechanic in Charge, George Walker. Walker had observed that the Stewart and the police tugboats, now 21 years old, had outlived their usefulness. He stated the boats were extremely faulty in design and construction and are impossible to operate in shallow waters where boats of this kind are greatly needed. Walker studied the modern boats used by other cities and proposed a $100,000 appropriation to construct a state-of-the-art vessel. But after three years of campaigning, his pleas were denied. The appeals from the fire department continued unabated until 1921 when, at last, a new fireboat was approved, built, and placed into service. The Rudolf Blankenberg was constructed by the J.W. Sullivan Company of New York at a cost of $249,000, nearly two and a half times George Walker's original estimate. A sister ship, the J. Hampton Moore, was placed under contract with the Merchant Ship Corporation of Chester, Pennsylvania at a cost of $213,000. The Edwin S. Stewart, Rudolf Blankenberg, and J. Hampton Moore remained in service well into the 1940s, by which time the need for more modern apparatus became overwhelming. Not only had the size of the waterfront area increased, but the nature of waterfront industry had drastically changed. Having become a volatile mixture of old wooden piers, oil refineries, and fuel-laden barge traffic, no one could deny the great risk nor the inadequacy of the equipment that was currently in place. Ready to man its waterfront with state-of-the-art equipment, Philadelphia hired preeminent naval architect Thomas Bowes to design a new fireboat that would incorporate all the features needed to adequately protect the river industries. Bowes' response to the city's request was both economical and reliable. A 
a diesel engine. A diesel boat would be much cheaper to operate, only needing to be run when actually responding to fires, unlike the current steam vessel which required that her boilers be kept warm at all times in order to get underway quickly. It was clear, a diesel boat was the best solution and the city immediately sought bids for its first diesel boat. The RTC Shipbuilding Corporation of Camden, New Jersey was a successful bidder and in 1948 the Bernard Samuel became the first of the diesel boats to enter the service. The Bernard Samuel was Philadelphia's first modern fireboat and one of the largest built on the East Coast at the start of World War II. She cost $175,000, which was about $75,000 less than the Rudolph Blankenberg. She proved very well during her 1948 sea trials, exceeding the expectations of her maneuvering and pumping capabilities, and the city quickly provided appropriations for two similar boats. By 1950, two new fireboats had been launched the Benjamin Franklin and the Delaware. Philadelphia's new fleet of waterborne protection was considered the best in the country and was given a top efficiency rating by the National Board of Fire Underwriters. The value of the bow's design has proven itself well. The boats, little altered over the last 40 years, have remained Philadelphia's first line of defense against waterfront fires. It wasn't until 2007 that the Bernard Samuel was finally retired and replaced with a new top-of-the-line boat, the Independence. Today, the Benjamin Franklin, the Delaware, and the Independence carefully guard the miles of piers and shores along the Delaware and Schuylkill Rivers and the hundreds of ocean-going vessels that comprise the Port of Philadelphia, providing the first line of defense for Philadelphia's precious waterfront. <laughs>